Good day, students. On this group, we're going to be going over four um, examples on how to calculate one-sided limits on uncreated integer functions, okay? So before we get started, we're going to take a look at uh, some basic review concepts that you have to have in mind before we get started. So we're going to start by taking a look at some prerequisite skills that you should know concerning the greatest integer function. So I can type it as prerequisite, prerequisite skills okay all right so what are some things that you need to know in order to be able to compute uh, one-sided limits um, on greatest integer function well you need to know how to find the greatest integer of uh, integers and non-integers too all right so let's say we have um, an integer a uh, for some integer a a the greatest integer function of a, when you're pushing a from the right, another way of writing this uh, symbol, you can also write it like this. The greatest integer can also be thought of, thought of as a floor of, of a number, okay? The floor of a number um, of any integer, if you're pushing the integer from the right, is simply that integer that you're approaching, okay? Um, another point to note is if you're approaching the integer from the left side, okay, approaching the integer from the left side, the greatest integer of that which can also be written as the floor when you're approaching the integer from the left side is equal to um, that integer that's been approached minus one. Okay, so these are the two main um, ideas you need to keep in mind uh, in order to compute this. All right, so let's take a look at some examples uh, of this. What if you were find, looking for the greatest integer function of uh, 3 from the right? 3 from the right. Now, what on earth does this mean? Well, this basically means that you're getting really, really close to 3 from the right. So, similar to, uh, you can consider this as the greatest integer function of 3.0001. All right, this is a good example. You get an arbitrary infinitely close to 3 without getting to 3. So you, you notice if you're approaching 3 from the right, the greatest integer function of that is simply going to be 3. What this function does is basically rounds non-integers into the biggest integer that's smaller than that non-integer. Okay, so the biggest integer that's smaller than 3.001 is 3, or you can consider 3 to be the floor of this non-integer right here. Okay, now what if you, uh, we were to do the greatest integer function of 3 from the left? This can be considered as uh, getting arbitrary close to 3 from the left on the number line. So it can be written as 2.999, okay? And it was the greatest integer function. What is the biggest integer that's smaller than this? It's clearly 2, okay? Which is the same thing as 3 minus 1, all right? So just to give you a graphical um, representation of what we're talking about, let's say we have... Um, the number line right there and if this is 3 and this is 3 um, this is going to be if you're approaching 3 from this side that's basically 3 from the right and then if you're approaching 3 from the left that's going to be 3 from the left okay so the greatest integer function basically rounds this down to 3 and anything to the left of this is rounds back to 2 if I wanted to sketch the graph of the greatest integer function you see that this um, this piece right here so if it looks something like this, uh, we're going to have um, a closed circle here. Closed circle here, and when at 4, we'll have an open circle. And this would, will be mapped to 3. This maps to 3. And then when you drop down to 2, you have an open circle here, and it goes all the way to 2. All right? So you see how um, if anything falls, uh, so this goes, let's say this is 2 right here. And then this is 4. All right, so anything 3 and less than 4 gets round, rounded down to 3. And anything that's supposed to be close, anything that's uh, to the left of 3 that's 2 or greater is going to be rounded down to 2. So this is basically how your greatest integer uh, function looks like. All right? Okay, so uh, this is the basic review um, on greatest integer. Now, now let's uh, also go over some basic uh arithmetic on approaching any um on, on infinite on infinity so let's say that this is one two and then some other things that you need to know is let's say you were dividing one 
by an infinitely small positive number. All right, so basic arithmetic on infinity, one over a really, really small positive number. Well, this can be written as one over, a really, really small positive number can be written as one over infinity, okay? One over infinity is as small as you can get. Uh, one over infinity, you can think about it as breaking one into infinitely many pieces, so it gets really, really small, all right? So I can multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is going to be infinity over one, and your final answer will be infinity, all right? And then another point to note, what if um, you divide it by one by, by an infinitely small negative number, okay? That's you basically approaching zero from the left. This can be rewritten as one over one divided by negative infinity. So if you divide negative infinity, if you divide one by negative infinity, you're gonna get an infinitely small negative number, all right? So if I do the same procedure I executed up here, multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator, I'm gonna have negative infinity, all right? So just keep these points in mind because we're gonna be using these uh, four uh, points um, in the examples we're about to do, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and try all the examples. Examples. All right, number one. Question number one, find the limit as x approaches one from the right of the square root of x minus the floor of x, or the greatest integer of x, of x. okay? All right, so to do this, we're just gonna substitute uh, one from the right into these um, variables right here. So we're going to have the square root of uh, 1 from the right minus the absolute value of uh, 1 from the right, like that, okay? Okay, so let's evaluate this. So this 1 from the right, let's leave that alone. Now what is the um, greatest integer of 1 from the right? 1 from the right can be considered as 1.001. So if, it's, if you're to the right, you just round it down to that number. So this simply rounds down uh, to 1. Okay? And then when you subtract these two, you're going to get uh, um, 0 from the right. Okay? You can look at 1, one from the right as 0.000, I mean 1.0001. Really, a number that's really, really close to 1 from the left from the right, and if you subtract one from it, you just be left with that really small number, okay? So let me give you an example. So one from the right is like 1.000, infinite number of zeros, one, right? And then you have one, is exactly one. So when you subtract these two, all, you le all that you'll be left with is that really, really small number that's infinitely close to one from the right. So when you subtract this, uh, all you get is that small number right there. So that's why you have zero from the right. If you take the square root of a really, really small number, almost zero is basically going to get an infinitely small number, which is zero also. So there goes the answer for number one. All right, let's take a look at question two. Uh, what is the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the greatest integer of one over x? Okay. All right, so for this one, let's plug in um, zero into our function right here. So it's going to be the greatest integer of 1 over 0 from the right, okay? 1 over 0 from the right. Now, let's take a look at this. So remember what we talked about up here. When you have 1 over 0 from the right, um, is 1 over an infinitely small number. So this is basically going to can be rewritten as the greatest integer of 1 over a very small positive number is infinity, okay? And the greatest integer function of infinity is simply infinity. All right, so there goes your answer. Okay, now let's move on to question three. Now, what if you want to find the limit as x approaches zero from the right of x times negative one to the four of one over x? Okay, how do we do this? Anyway, we can just directly plug in uh, 0 from the right into the x's. So we have 0 from the right times negative 1 raised to the greatest integer of 1 over 0 from the right. Okay? We have already computed this earlier. We determined that it was infinity. 0 from the right is basically can be viewed as 0 from the right, an infinitely small number, um, close to 0. Um, 
and then times negative 1 to infinity. Okay, this is very difficult to compute, but because if this is odd, then this would be odd. If this is this would be negative, if this is even, then this would be uh, positive. But guess what? We're multiplying this number by zero. So it doesn't matter what the sign is, if you multiply it by zero, zero has no orientation. So your final answer is simply going to be zero. All right, so there you have it. Now, number four, uh, we're going to take the limit as x approaches zero from the right of the floor. Let me use a different uh, notation system here. Uh, the greatest integer of x minus 1 raised to the greatest integer of 1 over x. Note that this notation and this notation mean exactly the same thing, so don't let that confuse you, all right? So let's substitute 0 from the right, the floor of 0 from the right, times negative 1 raised to the floor of 1 over 0 from the right, okay? All right, the floor of 0 from the right is the smallest, is the biggest integer that's smaller than an integer that's a number that's really, really close, infinitely close to 0 from the right, okay? And that's simply going to be 0. If you're going from the right, you basically round it to itself, all right? And then we're going to multiply this by um, negative 1. We talked about what this is. This is exactly what we did in questions 2 and um, 3. We found out that 1 over an infinitely small positive number is infinity, like that. And we have the situation here. This is hard to determine if it's, it depends on what this is. Infinity is neither or even, so it looks as though we can evaluate this limit, but we have a 0 here. So 0 multiplied by this number, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, is always going to be 0. So uh, there goes your final answer. All right? So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking here so you can get updates to other cool um, calculus clips such as this. Uh, please post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on microserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.